Hello everybody and welcome to a new weekly update from me, Martin. Um, I'm your Inkscape developer, developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me again this week. Um, first of all, as always, I want to give a big shout out to all of my sponsors on Patreon. Um, thank you for sticking with me. And uh, this week's Ride the GNU spot sponsor um, is Fred Brennan from the uh, Modular Font Editor K. Uh, thank you for jo joining us, um, sp sponsoring my Inkscape work. Um, this week, we have a, quite a bit of uh, mostly fixes, but also some I interesting developments too. Um, so just to kick off, what I'm going to say is we I put in a new a requested feature to the welcome screen. People were uh, asking for the ability to open files that weren't recent files from the, the, the welcome screen. Um, this is a piece of functionality that was originally missed when I developed the, the welcome screen last year. Uh, and so it was great to go back to the, the welcome screen, just give it a little bit more polish. Um, the user experience that I decided to add was a very simple um, item which the workflow is you can just press the load button straight away and it will load uh, the, the open dialog for you. Um, you can still open recent documents, you can still open templates and not, none of that has changed. Uh, it's just the addition of the extra button plus the uh, workflow. I had to test it with a few users to make sure it wasn't too, too confusing. Um, there were some translation fixes this, this week because the tra trans translations team is gearing up for the release. Uh, they're basically making sure that all of the translation strings are correctly formatted and that we pro programmers have correctly identified in the code all of the things that should be translated. Um, one of the things that I spent the majority of my time on this week was actually the grid arrangement. So uh, maybe you're not aware, but um, Inkscape has the ability to ar arrange things in, in a grid. And um, one of the pieces of functionality that that grid alignment has to do is it has to take all of the selected, selected objects and it has to uh, detect what order they're in. Now, computers don't know what order objects are in uh, unless you give, give them an algorithm to detect uh, that order. And of course, with a grid, if you have, as a user, laid out a bunch of things in a grid, you kind of expect the computer to detect that grid. Uh, the algorithm that we were currently using um, was not based on anything really. It was just trying to detect which rows objects were in and then cat categorizing them. Uh, at first, I couldn't fix this by just brute forcing code. So I went back to, I, I'm not a computer science and scientist, but in this particular instance, I did actually have to read some uh, papers on basically how to detect grids from visual systems. I uh, used a chess al al algorithm in this, this case, and uh, it works very, very well. So it's much more accurate at detecting the existing grid that you have. So no, even if the objects are different sizes, and uh, there was a bunch of other fixes that happened. I basically rewrote a block of that code, um, made it a lot more efficient and, and effective. Uh, user tests are great. Uh, they're showing that that grid al alignment is much more intuitive and a lot less um, problematic. Um, I also fixed a bug which is just a really silly problem Problem where if you tried to cut a, a subpath or a piece of text, so you <laughs> select a piece of text and then you press the cut key, it would delete the entire text block or the entire object path. Um, bad. That has been fixed. Um, I also did a lot of work on the Clipart Importer. Um, this was mostly about improving the PixMap uh, API, the extensions, the new graphic user interface for the extensions API. But I also wanted to add the specific feature of telling the user about the license that they are using from the art. For Open Clip, Clipart, this isn't so much of a pro problem because it's all guaranteed to be in the public domain. But when you start importing things from Wikimedia or bio icons or, and other places, um, you have to tell the user what the license is. There is just no way around, uh, you know, the user has to be aware that like these things come with responsibilities such as attribution 
uh, and sometimes share alike, like you have to use the license or non-commercial, right? And some of our users will need to abide by those licenses. Obviously, we can't enforce anything, but telling the users is very much the first step in that. Um, so there's a bunch of work to, involved in making the user interface for that so that the user is correctly warned. Uh, I tried to do some o o overlays. Um, I'm not sure about the design. This is a pro program I'm trying to make a design, so I don't know. If you have any good ideas for like what the this thing should actually look like, or you have some designs that you think are pretty, please let me know. Um, I'm very interested to ha incorporate designer uh, improvements. Um, so that's my work this week. So uh, let's work, move on to... Um, in other Inkscape news. Uh, this week I'm not actually going to follow programmers, we're going to save that for next week and instead we're going to look at the um, entries to the About Screen con contest. Okay, so as you can see here is the uh, list of entries. Uh, you'll actually notice there's two missing from here and that's because they've not been vetted yet. Uh, so we'll actually do those first. Uh, this is a painted piece, uh, very nautically themed uh, with the Inkscape logo right, right in the middle. Uh, I really like the blues on, on this one. This one is a, it's, it's very sort of Japanese and so, so some of the art styles. And uh, I love the the, ma the mountain in, in the background and the octopus. Um, it seems a little, little angry with, with Inkscape, but that's okay. Uh, with all the, the different tools that Inkscape has. Um, let's kick off into the vetted ones. So this is a mushroom one. You can actually see there's a little nin ninja on, on the bottom here. Uh, resting from... Uh, probably painting some things. Uh, this is a more Simpson simple one with some very, very effective colors coming out of a paint can. Uh, this one is interesting because at first it seems very sim simple with the Inkscape logo, but if you look carefully, it is incredibly textured, like the, the paper te texture in the blue. And also each of these panels has its own te texture. Uh, and the opposite of that is this more cartoony style um, which is, you know, it's it's so interesting to see all of the different art styles that you can make with Inkscape. Here's one that actually invokes Inkscape's construction. We usually get a few of this type of art um, with each con contest. This one's sort of showing the split screen. Uh, this one's a very energetic piece of artwork um, where you can see sort of like the, the emotion and all of this artwork flying out uh, of, of the pen. This one's more, more abstract, and you can sort of see how well Inkscape does for creating this sort of shape-based artwork. Uh, I really like the, when the, um, uh, per the person is drawing the actual Inkscape version. Uh, th this one has all of the different uh, types of Inkscape lo logo being drawn in dif different ways, has stamps. This one is a really interesting one because like, there's very few people use pastels and uh, this one is a very sort of serene, uh, I think it's a face. Uh, this one's a really beautiful one because it not only shows sort of the Inkscape logo, there's the mountain in, in the background, but there's just li little details all over this pic pic picture that are really impressive. Like everything from this li li little girl resizing the flower to the cat with the vector tail and even this guy with a paint can on, on his head. So, yeah, you, you, you can sort of see how uh, well well constructed this one is. Even if this one doesn't win, I have some plans for places where, where we can use this. Uh, this one actually is very much more like like a professional artwork um, art program would use. Uh, it's, it's like a spirograph design. And uh, the, the, the artist for, the, for this one actually posted an entire video of them cre creating this art artwork, which was really good. Um, this one is a space-themed one, beautifully re rendered. Uh, we usually get a few space-themed ones. Uh, I love the, the background sh shading. It's, it's very beautiful. Uh, this one's a more high-tech uh, re rendering. Um, you can just sort of see them using Inkscape inside of virtual reality. Uh, wouldn't that be something? Um, this one's a platypus one. Um, I think it's a pl platypus. Uh, they don't do much, but in this case, they are definitely using Inkscape. Uh, I really like the, the wood te texture they've got going on here. Uh, they must have spent some extra time uh, like making all these glowing shapes. 
this one is a really interesting one because 1.2 is the central focus but like, look at all the details in this pic picture um, just the rocks the, the plants the ocean lines and each of these little ro 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 robots seems to be flying around with a different type of artwork that you can make in Ins Inkscape uh, it's just re really cool stuff um, this is a lion which has been constructed using lots of polygons and you can actually see each of the uh, polygons has a different uh, fill uh, which is really nice this one is is great because it's um, it's so emotion like emotional and uh, this is basically what I look like when I'm looking at all the bugs with all, all, all the different tools going a little, little crazy like how am I gonna fi fix them all uh, but you can also see, see this is like the wonder of, of the user with all, all these tools that they, they can use this one's interesting because it, it, it sort of says it sort of looks like an animation you can see the, the, the ball coming down onto the mount, mountain um, I can actually see, see this being rendered as an animation for sort of like Inkscape videos and uh, finally uh, this was actually the first thing that was po po posted and it's such a great piece of artwork um, this is by the same one with the, with the bots you can actually see this the same style bots but th this one's more uh, industrial yeah, I think it's on the reddish side uh, it's just so beautiful so that's the art the artwork and what you're going to be able to do is once the contest finishes uh, you're going to be able to vote on your favorite one um, so please do get involved we're, we're looking at to get lots of votes so that we uh, know which of the ones the users would like to see the top three en entries will go to the leadership committee and we'll make a call on like which one will actually be used in the about screen but um, other artworks will actually be used in on the website on the, the welcome screen and, and in other places um, so it's this is just so beautiful Well, that was all very nice. Uh, thank you for joining me this week. And um, yeah, have a very good week, everybody.